Um, this is this is pretty cool. We have McLean, uh, who's co-founder of uh, New Cipher, and, and we'll we'll be talking. All right. So McLean, let's dance. Ready? <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Maybe dancing shoes on. All right. Yeah. Let's do it, dude. It's been too long. Oh my god. You know, <laughs> it's been too long. Um, so it's good to hear your voice again. It's been a long time, and um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, let's dive right into it. New Cipher. Okay. Uh, let's do it. Uh, two minutes. Where are we at? What is it? And what's the hotness? Sure. So the TLDR New Cipher is we are a decentralized threshold cryptography network um, that sits on top of Ethereum. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like a quasi layer two network. Um, there's a bunch of nodes that compose uh, the new cipher network that provide different threshold cryptography services. So right now that means they do something called proxy re-encryption, but uh, we built the network in such a way that in principle, they can do any kind of threshold cryptography. So things like threshold signatures or Shamir secret sharing, distributed key generation, uh, all of these different uh, cryptographic primitives. Um, and the nodes on the network <clears throat> provide these services. And to be a node, you have to stake the new Cypher token as a kind of bond or collateral. So it's essentially a work token. Uh, and then you, you do that and then you provide, you're able to provide these services to users of the network, which are typically other decentralized applications, other decentralized protocols. Uh, that are that are using the network for things like access control or signing or uh, different uh, different uh, use cases. Um, That's awesome. We launched... All right, hold on, hold Sorry, on, hold on. That's the sexiest stuff. So you're the co-founder, and um, I guess one of your co-founders is 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 the founder of Curve. Is that true? Uh, yeah. So Michael and I actually met at your SF Bitcoin Devs user group. <laughs> Wait, why am I still poor? <laughs> why am I still poor? <laughs> this is ridiculous. At Hacker Dojo, and, and when oh it used to be God, in Mountain right. View in like 2013 or 14, I don't remember exactly. That's right. That's right. And so it was, it was you, me, Michael, who, as you said, it, it started New Cypher with me and, and, and now is, is uh, started Curve and is running Curve. Uh, Tom Ding, who is one of the founders of. Oh my God. Uh, DVD, That's right. And yeah, I believe then, Zucky yeah. was the fifth person there, uh, who I nice. think is now one, you know, with you at, at Sommelier. Sommelier, uh, yeah, Sommelier. I know. Jesus, I just asked you guys to let me work with you because you guys are geniuses, and and I'm still poor. So I I want to say it's been an awesome pleasure and a privilege to be exposed to to you and to McLean, uh, sorry, and to Michael and to Zucky, um, because yeah, you guys are all all kicking butt right now and it's, it's just awesome so okay so i interrupted you so michael igorov was your co-founder right so he's done curve curves a multi-billion dollar uh rock star thingy um new cypher has been massively successful okay so now that we've gone past cryptography what's where, where's new cypher at today what's happening because you guys are doing some cool stuff sure so we we, we launched on mainnet in october 15 2020 so last late last year yeah. Uh, which was obviously like the big, you know, milestone for us that we've been working towards for for se several years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was that was very exciting and great for you know everyone on the team. Yeah. Uh, we have you know ever since then, knock on wood, the network has has held up pretty well. Like no major issues. Uh, you know, things have been running pretty smoothly since then. Yep. Uh, yep. What we are super excited about right now and, and spending a lot of time on is this uh collaboration that we are, are both uh, that our community is exploring with uh the keep network which is yeah also yeah. a decentralized special cryptography network that is uh i'd say quite similar to, to new cypher in many ways mm -hmm. and so we are uh, the sort of summary of that is is we are trying to figure out uh, both of our communities a way to kind of just smush these two networks together yeah so instead of you know new cypher being off on on one side and, and keep being off on the other and, and doing their own but but similar things we're trying to see if there's a way uh to just basically just combine all of all of those efforts all of those stakers all of those nodes um our, our, our respective development teams our respective communities and uh you know ideally like create something that is uh greater than the sum of its parts yeah um and so as far as we are aware this is the first sort of uh, 
attempt to do something like this, basically take two decentralized networks that are running in production and, and combine them. Yeah. Uh, so we, yeah. we, we're not quite sure what to call it. I think the, the term hard merge has been floating around as like a, an attempt at that, but <laughs> hard it often, merge. It often hard tends merge to confuse coming. people more so than like provide clarity. So I mean, Who's if anyone has branding? other ideas of like what we should call this, like we're, we're all you know, open ears. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, Deb McLean. I go to my wife. Hey, honey, I worked on a hard merge today. <laughs> like, what is that? I'm like, no, 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 no. What you think? No, what you think, darling? It, we just there were two DAOs, and and the DAOs needed to come together, and the community needed to bond, and then there was a vote. <laughs> wait, yeah. so so wait, are you guys the first successful um, uh, DAO merge, or uh, I mean, have there been I mean knock on wood, I, it, it hasn't happened yet. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, oh. it is, it will be successful. Um, okay. Okay. But yes, it's the first of its kind, as far as we are aware, and it's mm -hmm. certainly the first of its kind. Uh, you know, at, at a minimum of like networks that actually have a meaningful amount of value, um, right, and right, have right. You know, a meaningful number of nodes running, and yes. So yes. I think it, it's very much like we are sort of trying to figure this out as we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. And so that's been. I think very interesting, but also, of course, very challenging because there's no mm -hmm. <clears throat> precedence that we can look at to kind of mm. learn from. Um, yeah, of course, and of course. It's also we've, you know, because, you know, as you pointed out, this is not two companies merging. It is mm -hmm. two networks slash communities slash DAOs, what will we'll DAO on the new Cypher side and uh, yeah, a similar yeah. sort of decentralized governance community yes. multi sig on the Keep side. Yes, yes. Um, Doing this combination has a lot of complexities, both from like a technical implementation side of like if there's some yep. kind of shared staking contract, how do we do that? Yep. That you know accepts yep. potentially both new and keep. Um, mm. But also like on the you know, uh, community side, right? Like we can't like I like I can't go or the new cipher team core devs and the keep core devs. We can't just decide to do this, right? Like it has to be. Right. Because we don't control the networks, it has to be basically a uh, community level decision, yeah. and so that's been another interesting slash difficult uh, process of like doing this uh, or, or working through this process in public with the community from from day one, and yeah. getting everyone's involvement and buy in and, and input and ideas yeah. and iterations yeah. around, yeah. you know, uh, how how this will actually work. Um, yeah. So that's, I think, also a very uh, unique thing that you know you, yeah. you certainly yeah. don't see in you know, a, you know a, mm -hmm. um, a comparative like sort of merger of, of two companies. Um, right. Like well, we've had to well, do let me this jump from... in here. Let me jump in here. Hold on, that was good, good, good. I love it. But let me tell you why you're here because this is this is interesting. So um, we're sommelier, and if you're online, you don't know what the hell we do. Um, we make. Uh, you know, the SOM protocol, uh, Simulate protocol, uh, which is a Cosmos based blockchain. Plus, um, we have uh, a number of apps. First app was our V2, Uniswap V2 app. And then, of course, we have pairings by Simulate, which allows you to uh, become a liquidity provider on Uniswap V2 as if it was V2. And, and here's the deal we, we want to make it easy for liquidity providers to, to interact with tokens um, on the new Uniswap V3 world. And, and automate it. So you could think of New Cypher as, uh, sorry, as Somalia, as a as, as goal of helping you, um, you know, uh, take your liquidity wherever the liquidity needs to be automatically and without stress and, and low cost. And, you know, on our app, we, you know, on our V2 app, we would show the top moving or, you know, highly active uh, tokens that would be either gaining in, in returns, revenue, trading, volume, et cetera. And lo and behold, a few weeks ago, um, New Cypher started to pop. It was it was going up, and um, I'm not allowed to use the word pump. I'm sorry, but it started moving up, and and we wanted to know something was going on in the new cipher community, such that the new cipher um, <coughs> pool on Uniswap v2 was active. So I'm curious, McLean. Um, it's you know it seemed to correspond with a major uh, vote that was happening. Um, was that mm -hmm. the vote that was on the, on the on the merger, and, and what was that about, and and how did that impact you guys in governance? Sure. So a few weeks ago, I, I forget the, maybe three or four weeks ago, um, yeah. mm -hmm. I forget the precise date, but we, we did both the Keep community and the New Cypher community 
did a kind of uh, informal staker signal on mm -hmm. snapshot.org, which has no sort of on-chain binding effect of any kind, but was basically just yeah. a way for us to take, you know, a, a temperature gauge of like how people are feeling, stakers are feeling about this uh, collaboration and like basically like kind of like a go, no go, of like should, is this something that we, our community, respective community should spend a lot of time on over the next few weeks and, you know, months to, to figure out um, and to do. So basically it was like a thumbs up, thumbs down on like the, the idea of a collaboration or a, this quote unquote hard merge uh, with Keep in principle. And I think like anecdotally before we had this snapshot, um, it seemed like there was a lot of support uh, on both sides. Like I think it, it kind of the, the thesis um, of smushing these two decentralized social cryptography networks together made a lot of sense for people. And I think they saw the value in it. Uh, but that was just anecdotal. And so we, we, we expected that like, oh, probably like there'd be pretty yeah. good support. Um, but what ended up happening is that actually both the new Cypher staker signal and the keep staker signal had of the people that participated a hundred percent unanimous support for the, uh, for, for moving forward with sort of trying to figure out how to, to implement this. Um, so that was, I think, you know, very strong sort of evidence that you know, yeah. we weren't, <laughs> we weren't crazy and that like, it seems like the, the value of this uh, collaboration is, yeah. is pretty evident to, to people that are participating or engaged yeah. in, in both networks um, just outside of just, you know, the core team and, you know, the people yeah. that we had yeah, yeah. spoken to about it anecdotally. Um, so, okay. so that was a, a big signal for us to, to, to really sort of start committing towards figuring out exactly how to do this. Got it. So what's going to happen to the keep token and the new cypher token when this merge, when this hard merge has been. Yep. So that is still being, uh, figured out. So what, what's happened since that staker signal is that there have been several iterations of, um, uh, community proposals for exactly like what, how this will work and from an implementation and logistics standpoint. Mm -hmm. And most of those community, or well, actually maybe all of those community proposals have involved some third uh, token, it's like third yeah. token, uh, we'll call it as a placeholder, which would be used to stake in the new Cypher network, either by it, either only, you can only mm -hmm. stake T in the combined network or potentially yeah. you can stake T and, and new and, and keep, uh, it varies proposal by proposal. Yeah. Um, so we don't know yet exactly what the final proposal uh, mm -hmm. will be. And so mm -hmm. we can't say precisely what will happen to, to new and to keep. Um, some of the proposals call for like a, a Merkle drop of T to new and keep holders. Although I yeah. think the, the more recent proposals have moved away from that for, for different reasons. Right. Um, one of the more recent proposals calls for basically a kind of wrapping mechanism. Ooh, so if you've got... Up. If you've got yeah. new or keep, you yeah. can essentially deposit it into kind of a maker style CDP yep. to mint T. And got then it. you can take that T and stake it and run a node in this combined network. That sounds nice. That sounds so really that's, that sounds good. That's one uh, interesting yeah. approach that uh, I think is, is pretty clean and, and elegant yeah. that, that, yeah. that may end up being the final proposal. But we don't have a final proposal quite yet. We are... But sort of chasing down a couple of like all these different proposals have different tax and legal and, and other sort of implications and considerations. So we're, yeah. we're trying to just right now we're in the process of taking those proposals and getting sort of external third party validation from like tax experts and things like that mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. that however, mm -hmm. this ends up being structured, isn't kind of inadvertently creating any, any kinds of issues for, for token holders or stakers or other okay, community whoa, whoa, members. Whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. So you're saying that governance is being held back by tax law? Uh, I mean, just we don't want to, given that this is the first time this has ever happened, we oh, don't want to whoa, rush whoa, into whoa. something. This is governance. Code is law, bro. Code is law, okay? Well, let's put it on the blockchain. Let's put it on Ethereum. Uh, optimism is coming, by the way. Optimism is live. And let's go. Why, why the concern for the tax? <laughs> And the regulatory. Um, well, we, I mean, we just, I'm assuming we just, you're decentralized, right? Like, this should be like... Well, sure, but, like, individual stakers, I mean, just mm. because, like, let's say you are a participant in a decentralized network, that doesn't absolve you of 
<laughs> tax obligations. <laughs> and, and, and the IRS, if you're listening to this podcast, we tell you, everybody, pay your taxes, okay? Pay your goddamn taxes. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so, so really, right now, um, the decision hasn't been made because you still have to go through this regulatory review. And then when that's done, are you then then we can go? Then then Well, then so I think I think what we are hoping the process looks like from here is that we have, I think it's six or seven community proposals on the table. Um mm. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of like the, the more recent ones have, have drawn on the earlier ones. So I, yeah. I think we we've kind of narrowed it down to like a you know a couple. Yep. Um we're getting that sort of third party just confirmation that everything works as we expect it to. Yes. Um, and then once we have that, uh, the next step would be to take a draft final proposal to both communities for another snapshot, another signal. Yeah. And just to get kind of like an informal indication of, <clears throat> is this something that uh, is viable as a final proposal? Yes or no? Yep. Uh, and then assuming that there's a good response to that uh we would start moving into like the actual implementation of that so like if it's the if it's the cdp approach then obviously we need to write these cdp contracts yeah yeah uh, and then uh so we'd implement that you know, mm -hmm. do whatever you know kind of auditing and, and if you're listening if, uh, let me just say if you're listening to this podcast uh this ama um and you heard mclean mention the cdp approach more than once that's not because it's most likely going to happen, okay? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You're right. So go on. So this is very cool. So quick, quick, quick question. So liquidity providers live in Somalia. These are folks that you know bring their capital to um, you know provide liquidity in Decentra, who's like Uniswap, um, Curve, uh, you know uh, Sushi Swap, um, even you know Pancake Swap, etc. Um, my question is this: I, I know we're not supposed to be talking about trading here. But to our listeners who are liquidity providers, um, you know, you know, their interests are, you know, looking at tokens and, and that, you know, are going to make big moves and, and make big changes. Um, and of course, maybe the question I have for maybe maybe what I would say is that um, this what's going to happen with New Cypher and the eventual decision is going to be an exciting time for the New Cypher token. Mm -hmm. And that. Liquidity providers should really, really keep their eye on what's going on in governance over at New Cypher. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure exactly what, what the question is there. But uh, good I point. That was not that, a question. <laughs> I will say that, however, whatever proposal ends up being the final proposal, one of the I would say hard requirements is that it's kind of no token holder left behind. So whether you yes. are staking or passively holding or providing liquidity or doing whatever it is that you're doing with the token. Yes. Uh, we don't want to kind of just leave anyone out in the cold. Right. So there, there, whatever the final proposal ends up being will be inclusive of, of all holders of, of either token. Awesome. Awesome. And that's great news. Okay. So uh, thank you, McLean. Um, and I've pushed as far as I can push. So now we're at the uh, five minutes before we wrap up. Uh, let's see any questions from the audience. Mario, how do we do this? Welcome to Clubhouse for Telegram. You can raise your hands just like in Clubhouse. <laughs> and, and just like in Clubhouse, we'll ignore you. <laughs> All right. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, while we're waiting for, for questions, McLean, um, one of the things we're at Similia, we're looking at is Uniswap v3. Um, and um, the new Cypher liquidity pools. Um, were, was your team responsible for creating a new Cypher uh, liquidity pool on Uniswap v3? And do you guys care about it? Uh, not, not to my knowledge. Uh, I mean, it's possible that a team member created the v3 pool, but I, I am not currently providing liquidity on, on v3. Like the company is not. Right. Um, so no. Uh, I mean not. The question, do we care about it? I mean, 
obviously I think it's uh, I think it's great for there to be liquidity on DEXs and so mm -hmm. that people aren't reliant on centralized exchanges. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so I am I'm supportive of uh, of liquidity pools on on decentralized exchanges. Absolutely. Here, 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 here. Um, and I guess uh, you know, is it since the, to, to your answer? Since of course you guys did not create it, teams did not create it. Could have been a community member. Um, um, it seems that you it, it's okay. Like you know, um, you, you know, you're truly decentralized. Anybody can create a new cipher liquidity pool on any Uniswap contract and uh, mm -hmm. provide liquidity there. Um, and and that's one of the cool things about decentralization. So I think um, the question is, you know, um, we usually ask now many of our pools, you know, do you care if your token has slippage? Is that an issue? Like, or is slippage not an issue for your token in your particular use case? Is, is trading ability and, and low slippage trading opportunities something of interest or important for your ecosystem yes or no uh i, I mean i mean we're we're very much focused on getting people to to stake and to run nodes ultimately like that's the, the functionality yep. of the token and what it's meant yep. to be used for yep uh obviously like you know to the extent that like low slippage makes it easier for potential node operators and potential stakers to acquire the token Yes. on attractive terms, um, mm -hmm. they think that's great. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, not the focus, not our focus specifically, but you know, yeah. obviously there are, you know, it's, it's beneficial for you know, there mm -hmm. to be easy access points and on ramps into into new cipher and, and into staking for people yeah. um, that are accessible regardless of you know what jurisdiction they're in, whether yeah. they have mm -hmm. access to Coinbase or mm -hmm. Finance or whatever right. exchanges yeah. uh, that may have kind of permissioned. <clears throat> permissioned access. How big? How big is the new cipher staking node network? I mean, how many nodes are there? Uh, I haven't checked today, but there's approximately two thousand nodes. All right. Uh, um, so the way that we launched the network, yeah. So right now there are two thousand one hundred and sixteen uh, nodes on on the new cipher network. I just checked the the status page. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Which I can actually link that in yeah. the group if Could people you, are yeah, interested. In the Telegram. Yes, please. We would definitely love to see the new Cypher network. Um, yeah. So I think one of the, I think the main reason why we've had good success with getting so many nodes running on the new Cypher network is the way that we did the initial launch and distribution of of new was through this mechanism that we called that we created and called the work lock. Yep. So instead of doing like an ICO or an IEO or airdrop or, you know, some other kind of token distribution, what we did was we allowed people to essentially stake ETH in order to pre-commit to running a node once yeah. the mainnet had launched. Yep. And in exchange, like you, you, you pre-commit to running a node and then you run a node and then in the work lock, after you do it for about six months, you get all of your ETH back and you also receive your new token allocation, which you can at that point continue to stake and continue to run a node or, or do whatever you like with. Uh, and that was actually a super successful uh, distribution. Uh, I think even more than, than we had anticipated, uh, but that ran for, uh, the work lock ran for a month be preceding mainnet launch. So from mid September to mid October approximately. And it ended yeah. up having three. I think it was slightly over three hundred and fifty-three thousand ETH got staked into the network. Wow, I remember that uh, mm -hmm. by over two thousand nodes. And you know, at the time, I think that was I forget if it was like one hundred and fifty million U.S. dollar equivalent or something like that. And of course, now, <laughs> now like probably over a billion dollars, or maybe not after the after the dip, but over like a billion dollars worth of of USD got got staked uh, equivalent in the work lock at today's prices. Um, that is, so I that think is that was amazing. a super interesting, novel kind of distribution that, that was really successful in driving the kind of engagement and selecting for the types of um, network participants and token holders that, that we wanted for our network specifically. So I think there's still a lot of space for people to try these sort of new and novel distributions that are, are filtering for the 
right types of token holders for their projects. So I think yeah. I'm yeah. really interested in, in seeing sort of new experiments and in, in attempts at uh, at, at uh, token distributions. Uh, absolutely. And uh, I, uh, yes, I think you agree. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it, we need to go back and look at that. I think that's a, that, that success is something that maybe, you know, in the speed of change in, um, in the, in the um, blockchain space that maybe many people have missed. And I think more people need to imitate the new cypher work block distribution strategy because the success has already been documented and, and self-evident. So, so um, you know, congratulations to the team for that. But also um, congratulations to you and, and um, the Keep team for coming together and really deliberating on on a merger of these two successful projects. Um, I know Matt Longo; he's a great great engineer, a great entrepreneur, um, and I'm super excited to see what you guys are gonna you know rock as uh, the you know some of these issues get worked out. And and as you said, no new cypher token holder will be left behind. <laughs> they will all come to the new to the new to the new to the new world. Um, Congratulations, McLean. I, I know we're out of time and I know you're working on some other cool stuff. So what we're going to do is I think maybe um, bring you back later on after um, the merge has happened to talk about, you know, what's happened in the new network and also maybe the new stuff that you're you're rocking through um, uh, going forward. So super congrats. As you've come a long way uh, from from uh, <laughs> Packer Dojo um, and uh, love what you guys have done with New Cypher and, and uh, all the new stuff yet to come. Awesome. Thank you, Tarek. This was, this was fun. And, and thanks to, to your community. Yeah. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, McLean. We are out. And, uh,